Imagine a time when the Mediterranean was a cradle of civilizations, a vast expanse of water connecting different cultures, economies and powerhouses. Among these, one city-state emerged as a formidable maritime empire. Welcome to Carthage. Nestled in the heart of the Mediterranean on the northeastern coast of modern-day Tunisia, Carthage was founded by Phoenician settlers around 814 BCE. The city owes its birth to the legendary Queen Elisa, also known as Dido, who fled from her home city of Tyre in present-day Lebanon after a brutal power struggle with her brother. Carthage, a Phoenician word meaning new town, started as a humble settlement, but its strategic location soon made it a hub for trade and a gateway to the western Mediterranean. The Carthaginians, heirs to the Phoenician legacy of seafaring and trade, harnessed their maritime prowess to establish key trade routes, dealing in precious metals, textiles and the coveted purple dye extracted from sea snails. Their merchant ships plied the waters, touching shores as far as Britain in the north to the western coast of Africa. Carthage's economic influence grew and with it, its power. The city-state expanded its territories, establishing colonies and trading posts across the Mediterranean, from Sicily to Spain. This network of colonies not only bolstered Carthage's wealth, but also its military might, as its navy became one of the most formidable in the ancient world. But Carthage was not just a thriving maritime empire, it was a civilization marked by sophisticated urban planning. With a bustling city center, grand temples, and a fortified harbor capable of docking hundreds of ships. Yet, beneath this veneer of prosperity and power, there lurked a chilling aspect of Carthaginian society. The alleged practice of child sacrifice, a shocking testament to the lengths they might have gone to appease their gods and secure their city's prosperity. As we delve into the history of Carthage, we will explore this paradox of a civilization that was at once a beacon of maritime power and trade and yet allegedly steeped in a horrifying ritual. From its humble beginnings as a Phoenician settlement to its rise as a formidable empire, Carthage's story is a fascinating saga of power, rivalry and resilience. Welcome to our journey into Carthage, the shining jewel of the ancient Mediterranean. Let's journey back in time to the birth of Carthage, a city destined to become a maritime powerhouse. Carthage was founded by Queen Elissa, also known as Dido, around the 8th century BCE. Fleeing from her home city of Tyre, present-day Lebanon, after a brutal power struggle with her brother, Dido found refuge on the northeastern coast of modern-day Tunisia. Here, she founded Carthage, a word meaning new town in Phoenician. Carthage began as a humble settlement, but its strategic location quickly transformed it into a major trading hub. From a humble Phoenician settlement, Carthage has risen to a maritime powerhouse. But as it grows, it will soon face a formidable rival, Rome. The stage is set in the Mediterranean. On one side, we have Carthage, a thriving city of traders and seafarers. And on the other, Rome, an emerging power with ambitions of its own. The seeds of rivalry between these two powers were sown long before they met on the battlefield. The tension began with Carthage's expansion into Sicily, a stone's throw away from the Italian peninsula. Rome, sensing a threat to its interests, retaliated, sparking the First Punic War. In a series of brutal conflicts known as the Punic Wars, Carthage and Rome would vie for control of the Mediterranean. The wars would see the likes of great military leaders like Hannibal Barca and Scipio Africanus, whose strategic genius would shape the course of these battles. Hannibal, with his audacious crossing of the Alps and his tactical brilliance at the Battle of Cannae, would become a legendary figure in Carthaginian history. Meanwhile, Scipio Africanus, the Roman general who ultimately defeated Hannibal at the Battle of Zama, would be hailed as one of Rome's greatest military minds. These wars were not just about territorial gains or economic interests. They were also a clash of cultures, values and ways of life. They would define the destinies of both Carthage and Rome, setting the stage for the rise and fall of empires. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this fascinating period of history in the next scenes. From the heart of Carthage, a young commander rises, ready to challenge the might of Rome. This is the tale of Hannibal Barca. Hannibal was not just a military commander. He was a symbol of Carthage's indomitable spirit and determination. His most audacious act was undoubtedly his crossing of the treacherous Alps, a feat thought impossible by many. 
With a formidable force including war elephants, he traversed the rugged terrain, facing harsh weather conditions, hostile tribes, and logistical nightmares. Yet, he emerged on the other side, ready to take the battle to Rome's doorstep. Hannibal's military genius is often exemplified in the Battle of Cannae, where he executed one of the most successful envelopment tactics in military history. Luring the Roman forces into a trap, he encircled and decimated them, delivering a crushing blow to Rome's military pride. This victory did not just shock Rome, it reverberated across the Mediterranean, signaling that Carthage was a force to be reckoned with. However, despite these tactical victories, Hannibal faced significant challenges. His forces were far from home, cut off from reinforcements and supplies. Additionally, Rome's strategy of avoiding direct confrontations and focusing on weakening his position proved effective over time. Despite these setbacks, Hannibal's campaigns in Italy lasted for over 15 years, proving his resilience and strategic acumen. This scene has been a deep dive into Hannibal's military campaigns during the Second Punic War. His audacious journey across the Alps, his tactical victories, and his dogged determination in the face of adversity exemplify the spirit of Carthage at its peak. But as we'll see in the next scene, this spirit was not confined to the battlefield. It permeated every aspect of Carthaginian society, even its darkest corners. Stay tuned as we explore the shocking sacrifices of Carthage in the next scene. In the heart of the Mediterranean, a city once vibrant and powerful now stands on the brink of destruction. Welcome to Carthage in the throes of the Third Punic War. The stage is set in 149 BCE as Rome, still nursing the wounds inflicted by Hannibal, initiates a brutal campaign against its old rival. Despite being a shadow of its former self, Carthage refuses to go quietly into the night. The city's inhabitants, led by the heroic Hasdrubal, resist with fierce determination, turning their city into a fortress, yet the odds are overwhelmingly against them. Rome's forces, led by Scipio Emilianus, lay siege to the city, cutting off supplies and reinforcements. For three long years, Carthage holds out, but the end is inevitable. In 146 BCE, after a grueling siege, the Romans finally breach the city's defenses. What follows is a massacre, as Roman legions leave no stone unturned in their quest for total destruction. The city is razed, its inhabitants sold into slavery, and the ground is said to be sown with salt to prevent any future habitation. The fall of Carthage marks a significant shift in the power dynamics of the Mediterranean. Rome, now unchallenged, rises as the dominant power, its influence spreading far and wide. Yet, the cultural ramifications of Carthage's fall are equally significant. The Punic language and culture, once prevalent across the Mediterranean, gradually fade away, absorbed into the expanding Roman Empire. Yet the memory of Carthage, its indomitable spirit, its tactical genius, and its shocking sacrifices continue to echo through the ages. As we continue our journey into the history of Carthage, we'll explore how this fallen titan left an enduring impact on the world, even in its destruction. Buckle up! as we delve into the shocking sacrifices of Carthage in the next scene. Even in defeat, Carthage left an indelible mark on the pages of history. Carthage was not merely a city that fell, it was an empire that shaped the course of Western civilization. Its maritime technology, trade networks and cultural exchange were unparalleled, leaving a lasting impact far beyond its physical boundaries. Carthage was a pioneer in maritime technology, their ships, renowned for their speed and agility, dominated the Mediterranean, facilitating the establishment of a vast trade network. Carthaginian ships sailed as far as the British Isles in the north and the sub-Saharan Africa in the south, exchanging goods, ideas and cultures. They traded in a variety of commodities, including precious metals, exotic spices and fine textiles, introducing the wider Mediterranean to new goods and luxuries. But the Carthaginian legacy extends beyond commerce and technology. Their cultural contributions, from language to religion, seeped into the social fabric of the Mediterranean. The Punic language, a variant of Phoenician, was spoken and written across the region, while their religious practices, despite their shocking aspects, influenced neighboring societies. The defeat of Carthage, while a tragic end to a formidable empire, marked a pivotal point in history. Its fall paved the way for the rise of Rome as the unchallenged power in the Mediterranean. 
The Romans, having absorbed Carthage's territories and learned from its strategies, expanded their empire, carrying with them the remnants of Carthaginian culture. In many ways, the fall of Carthage fueled the rise of the Roman Empire and through it shaped Western civilization. As we delve deeper into the history of Carthage, we'll uncover more about this fascinating civilization, its rise, its fall, and its enduring legacy. Next, we'll explore the shocking sacrifices of Carthage. Carthage's prowess was not only a testament to their commercial acumen, but also to their unparalleled naval capabilities. Carthage's maritime dominance was a cornerstone of their prosperity and power. As we've seen, their innovative ships and expansive trade networks were key to their success. But let's delve deeper into their naval supremacy. The Carthaginians were not just traders, they were formidable naval warriors. Their navy was the backbone of their empire, safeguarding their trade routes and projecting their power across the Mediterranean. The Carthaginian navy was renowned for its advanced shipbuilding techniques and tactical brilliance. Their warships, particularly the Quinquereme, were marvels of ancient engineering. These massive vessels designed to carry hundreds of soldiers and rowers were both swift and deadly. With a ramming prow designed to breach enemy hulls and a high freeboard for protection against boarding attacks, the Quinquereme was a force to be reckoned with. From the vibrant markets of Carthage to the farthest reaches of the Mediterranean, the pulse of commerce was the lifeblood of this ancient civilization. The prosperity and power of Carthage were not built on military might alone. Its economic system, centered around a vast trade network, was the foundation of its wealth and influence. The Carthaginians were master traders, their merchant ships sailing far and wide, carrying a myriad of goods from precious metals and textiles to exotic spices and fine pottery. Silver from Spain, tin from Britain, silk from the East, all flowed into the bustling markets of Carthage, making it a thriving hub of commerce and culture. These trade routes protected by their formidable navy were the arteries of the Carthaginian Empire, circulating wealth and prosperity throughout. But it wasn't just about importing goods. Carthage was also a significant exporter, particularly of purple dye, a luxury item in the ancient world sourced from the Murex sea snail. This dye was so prized that it became a symbol of power and wealth worn by royalty and the elite. Carthage's economic system was an intricate web of commerce, diplomacy and naval power. It allowed them to maintain their prosperity, influence far-off lands and ultimately rise as a maritime powerhouse. This economic might, coupled with their military prowess, set the stage for Carthage's dramatic clashes with Rome that would shape the fate of the ancient world. Behind the grandeur of its economic might and the chilling tales of its sacrifices, Carthage reveals a complex tapestry of cultural and religious practices. The Carthaginians were deeply religious, their lives and society profoundly intertwined with the worship of numerous deities. The most venerated among them were Baal Hammon, the chief god, often identified with the Greek god Cronus, and Tanit, the supreme female deity associated with fertility, the moon and the stars. Together, they formed the divine couple at the heart of Carthaginian religion. Their images were ubiquitous throughout the city, etched into stelae, coins and amulets, reflecting their pervasive influence on everyday life. But the worship of these deities was not without controversy. The child sacrifices we have previously discussed were reportedly performed in honor of these gods, particularly Baal Hammon. Such practices, however, have been a subject of intense debate among historians, with some arguing that the accounts were exaggerated or even fabricated by the city's enemies to tarnish its image. Despite these controversies, there is no denying the profound impact of religion on Carthaginian society. Religious rituals permeated all aspects of life, from the private sphere of the home to the public domain of politics and trade. They believed that their prosperity, their military victories and even their maritime supremacy were all gifts from the gods, blessings to be acknowledged and repaid through rituals and offerings. This intricate relationship between the divine and the worldly was a defining feature of Carthaginian culture, shaping its identity and its destiny. As we continue our journey into the heart of Carthage, we'll delve deeper into these fascinating aspects of their society, 
revealing the complexities and contradictions that made this ancient civilization so unique. Behind the grandeur of its temples and the clamor of its markets, the city of Carthage was a complex tapestry of social classes and political structures. The Carthaginian society was divided into several classes, with the affluent aristocracy, known as the Magonid, at the top. These were the city's wealthiest citizens, often landowners or successful merchants who held considerable power and influence. Beneath them were the Liber Phoenicians, a mixed class of Carthaginian citizens and indigenous Libyans. They were typically involved in trade, crafts and farming. At the bottom were the common citizens, often laborers and slaves, who formed the backbone of Carthage's economy. The city's governance was an oligarchy ruled by two annually elected sufetis, similar to consuls in Rome, and a council of elders known as the Carthaginian Senate. This senate was composed of the city's most influential aristocrats, who made decisions on matters of state and foreign policy. However, the senate's power was not absolute. They were often checked by the popular assembly, a body composed of the city's citizenry who had the power to elect officials and approve or reject major policy. Despite its apparent stability, Carthage's political system was not without challenges. The city's rapid expansion and increasing wealth led to growing social and economic disparities, stirring discontent among the lower classes. Moreover, the pressures of maintaining Carthage's vast empire often strained the city's resources and led to conflicts within the ruling class. Yet despite these challenges, Carthage flourished, its social and political structures enabling it to become one of the most powerful city-states of the ancient world. Its governance model, though not without flaws, allowed for a degree of stability and prosperity that few other civilizations of its time could match. As we delve deeper into the heart of Carthage, we will explore more about these fascinating aspects of its society, revealing the complexities and contradictions that made this ancient civilization so unique. Carthage was not only a beacon of power and wealth, but also a melting pot of artistic and architectural innovation. As we navigate through the bustling streets of ancient Carthage, we come across a vivid display of artistry that reflects the city's diverse influences. Carthaginian art and architecture were unique, a fusion of Phoenician, Greek and indigenous North African styles that gave the city its distinct aesthetic identity. Let's first turn our gaze towards the city's sculptures. Carthaginian sculptors were known for their intricate detailing and emotive expressions, influenced by the Greeks, but they also incorporated Phoenician elements such as religious symbols and depictions of their gods. From the towering monuments to the delicate amulets, each sculpture tells a story of Carthage's rich cultural tapestry. Next, we explore Carthaginian pottery. Here, the indigenous North African influence is evident. The pottery often featured abstract geometric designs, a hallmark of Berber art combined with Phoenician motifs. These earthenware objects, ranging from everyday dishes to elaborate ceremonial urns, offer a glimpse into the daily life and beliefs of the Carthaginians. Now let's marvel at the grandeur of Carthaginian architecture. The city's layout was a testament to urban planning, with wide straight streets, a fortified harbour and sprawling markets. The buildings, often constructed with local limestone and covered in stucco, were adorned with intricate friezes and reliefs. The most impressive of these structures was the sacred precinct, or Tophet, a testament to the city's religious fervour. But perhaps the most striking feature of Carthaginian architecture was its blending of styles. The grand temples bore resemblance to Greek architecture with their columned porticos and pediments, while the houses were similar to Phoenician designs with their flat roofs and enclosed courtyards. Yet, they also incorporated North African elements, such as the use of vibrant colors and complex geometric patterns. This fusion of influences not only shaped Carthage's architectural and artistic landscape, but also reflected the city's identity as a cosmopolitan hub. It's a reminder of how cultures can intersect, influence and enrich each other, creating something truly unique. As we delve further into the heart of Carthage, we'll continue to uncover the myriad facets that made this ancient civilization so remarkable. Carthage. A city of power and wealth was also a hub of cultural exchange and dissemination. As the Carthaginians expanded their maritime trade networks, they also spread their culture far and wide, leaving an indelible mark on the societies they encountered. 
Let's embark on a journey tracing the Carthaginian diaspora and its far-reaching cultural influence. Our first stop is Iberia, where the Carthaginians established colonial settlements. Here, they introduced their advanced seafaring techniques, agricultural practices, and even their language, Punic. The influence of Punic can still be seen in some modern Iberian languages, a testament to Carthage's enduring legacy. Next, we head to Sicily, another significant colony of Carthage. The Carthaginians brought with them their religion and customs, deeply influencing the local culture. The island's archaeological sites bear witness to this cultural fusion, with Carthaginian temples and sacred precincts standing alongside native Sicilian structures. Finally, we journey to North Africa, the homeland of Carthage. Here, the Carthaginians interacted with the indigenous Berber tribes, leading to a mutual exchange of ideas and practices. This cultural hybridization is evident in the unique blend of architectural styles and the fusion of religious beliefs found in the region. The Carthaginian diaspora was not a one-way street, however, as they spread their culture, they also absorbed elements from the societies they encountered. This cultural exchange enriched Carthaginian society, leading to a unique blend of influences that defined Carthage's distinct identity. As we delve deeper into Carthage's history, we see that it was not just a city or an empire, but a catalyst for cultural diffusion and hybridization. From language to religion to customs, Carthage's influence permeated the ancient world, leaving a legacy that continues to resonate today. Stay tuned as we explore the darker side of Carthaginian culture in our next scene, the shocking sacrifices of Carthage. Let's embark on a journey of discovery, diving deep beneath the surface to unearth the hidden secrets of Carthage. Recent archaeological excavations have revealed a wealth of information about this ancient civilization, providing new insights into its history, culture and lifestyle. From monumental structures to everyday artifacts, each discovery tells a story, painting a vivid picture of Carthaginian society. We begin with the Birsa Hill, where the ruins of the ancient city of Carthage lie. Here, archaeologists have unearthed the remains of a vast network of streets, homes and public buildings, including the mighty Carthaginian harbour, a testament to their maritime prowess. The discovery of vast cemeteries, known as Tophets, has sparked intense debate among scholars. These sacred precincts filled with urns containing the charred remains of children lend weight to the chilling tales of child sacrifice offering a stark glimpse into the darker side of Carthaginian religion. But it's not all grim. The excavations have also uncovered beautiful examples of Carthaginian art and craftsmanship. Intricate mosaics, finely crafted pottery, and elaborate jewelry speak of a sophisticated and cultured society far removed from the brutal image often portrayed in ancient texts. Alongside these tangible remnants of the past, Modern historians and scholars are continually re-evaluating our understanding of Carthage. New methodologies and interpretive frameworks are shedding fresh light on this ancient civilization, challenging traditional narratives and offering nuanced perspectives on its history, culture and legacy. The mysteries of Carthage continue to captivate us, a testament to the enduring allure of this ancient maritime powerhouse. Stay tuned as we delve into the chilling practice of child sacrifice in our next scene, The Shocking Sacrifices of Carthage. Having explored the archaeological discoveries and before delving into the shocking sacrifices of Carthage, let's pause to explore one of the most intriguing aspects of Carthaginian history, its mysterious demise. The destruction of Carthage at the end of the Third Punic War in 146 BC is a well-documented historical event. However, the extent of the destruction and the fate of its inhabitants remain subjects of intense debate among historians. Some ancient sources suggest that Rome was so intent on eradicating its rival that it razed the city to the ground, sowed the land with salt to prevent future habitation, and sold the remaining inhabitants into slavery. But is this the whole truth? Modern archaeological studies have challenged this narrative suggesting that instead of complete annihilation, there might have been a more complex series of events. While there's no denying the widespread destruction, evidence of continued habitation and the swift Roman rebuilding of the city suggest that the story of Carthage's end might not be as clear-cut as we've been led to believe. Furthermore, the fate of the Carthaginian citizens is a puzzle yet to be fully solved. 
What happened to those who survived the Roman onslaught? Were they all sold into slavery? Or did some manage to escape, contributing to the cultural and genetic fabric of the Mediterranean world? These unanswered questions serve as a reminder of the complex and often elusive nature of historical truth. As we delve deeper into the history of Carthage, we encourage you, our viewers, to critically analyze these narratives, engage with ongoing scholarly discussions, and form your own interpretations. Stay with us as we journey into the next scene, the shocking sacrifices of Carthage. Before we delve into the shocking discoveries of Carthaginian sacrifices in our next scene, let's take a detour and explore Carthage's enduring presence in popular culture and how it has shaped our perceptions of this ancient civilization. From epic poems to modern movies, the story of Carthage has captivated audiences for centuries. The ancient Roman poet Virgil immortalized the Punic Wars and the figure of Dido, the legendary queen of Carthage, in his epic, The Aeneid. But Virgil's narrative, like many historical accounts, was influenced by the politics of his time painting Rome as the ultimate victor and portraying Carthaginians in a less favorable light. The echoes of this bias can be seen in how Carthage and its people have been depicted in later works of art and literature. Fast forward to the modern era and we see that Carthage continues to captivate our imagination. From Gustave Flaubert's historical novel, Salambo, to the popular video game series, Assassin's Creed, Carthage and its conflicts with Rome remain a source of fascination. These portrayals, while often dramatic and embellished for entertainment, have the power to shape our understanding of Carthage and its history. They can reinforce stereotypes, but they can also spark interest and inspire a deeper exploration of the past. The enduring popularity of Carthage in popular culture is a testament to its significant role in shaping the course of history. But as consumers of these narratives, it's crucial to remember that they are interpretations, not definitive accounts. As we delve deeper into the history of Carthage, we encourage you to question these portrayals, critically evaluate their sources, and seek out a more nuanced understanding of this fascinating civilization. Now let's turn our attention back to the historical narrative and prepare for a chilling revelation in our next scene, the shocking sacrifices of Carthage. Having ventured through the realms of ancient literature and modern media, we now find ourselves standing on the precipice of a chilling revelation about Carthaginian society. But before we plunge into the depths of this grim reality, let's take a moment to reflect on the journey we've embarked on so far. Pouring over the annals of history, we've seen how Carthage emerged from humble Phoenician roots to become a maritime powerhouse. Its epic rivalry with Rome, embodied in the audacious journey of Hannibal, is stuff of legends. We've explored the intricate web of Carthaginian culture and religion, the complex social hierarchy, and the city's economic might. Through archaeological discoveries, we've glimpsed the fusion of influences that shaped Carthage and its diaspora's role in cultural exchange. Yet history is a complex tapestry, woven from countless threads of narratives, perspectives, and interpretations. As we navigate through these stories, it's vital to remember that each account offers a mere fragment of the larger picture. So let's continue our exploration armed with a critical mind and an insatiable curiosity. Brace yourselves as we delve into the shocking sacrifices of Carthage in our next scene. As we navigate through the complex and fascinating narrative of Carthage, it's essential to delve deeper, to question, to explore. To aid you on this journey, we have compiled a list of resources that offer a wealth of information about the history and archaeology of Carthage. Firstly, Carthage must be destroyed. The Rise and Fall of an Ancient Civilization by Richard Miles is an excellent book that provides an in-depth analysis of Carthage's history. For those interested in primary sources, the writings of Polybius and Diodorus Siculus offer invaluable insights into the Carthaginian society and its conflicts with Rome. The works of modern scholars such as B. H. Warmington and Serge Lancel also offer comprehensive studies on Carthaginian history. Documentaries such as The Punic Wars by the History Channel provide a visual exploration of Carthage's epic battles with Rome. Online platforms like JSTOR and Google Scholar offer a plethora of scholarly articles for those keen on academic exploration. We also recommend visiting the Bardo Museum in Tunis, virtually if not physically, as it houses an impressive collection of Carthaginian artifacts.
Websites like Ancient History, Encyclopedia and World History Encyclopedia also offer comprehensive, peer-reviewed information. But remember, history is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. We encourage you to question what you read, engage in scholarly debates and form your own interpretations. By doing so, you'll not only deepen your understanding of Carthage, but also develop a critical lens through which to view history. Now, let's venture into the chilling revelations of Carthaginian society, their shocking sacrifices. Picture this, a thriving ancient city where child sacrifices were a grim reality. Welcome to Carthage, in the heart of the Mediterranean. Carthage once stood as a beacon of power, wealth and culture. But beneath its prosperous surface, the city harbored a chilling secret. The Carthaginians, in their quest for divine favor, reportedly engaged in an unthinkable practice, the sacrificial offering of their own children. Now, let's take a step back. Carthage wasn't always a mighty empire. No, it started as a humble Phoenician settlement founded by Queen Elissa, also known as Dido, around the 8th century BC. The Phoenicians, renowned seafarers and traders, spread their influence across the Mediterranean. But it was Carthage that would rise to become their greatest colony. Back to the sacrifices, it's a topic that sparked heated debate among historians. Some believe these accounts were exaggerated by ancient authors, perhaps to vilify their rivals. But archaeological findings suggest there may be more to these stories than mere propaganda. Tophets, or sacred precincts, were discovered adorned with the poignant inscriptions and urns containing the charred remains of children. These findings seem to corroborate the grim tales told by ancient historians like Diodorus Siculus, who described how Carthaginian parents would attempt to mask their anguish with stoicism as their children were led to the sacrificial pyres. Imagine the paradox, a civilization that produced remarkable navigators, traders and statesmen, yet was allegedly steeped in such a horrifying ritual. It's a stark reminder of how complex and at times contradictory human societies can be. The sacrifice of children, whether exaggerated or not, paints a vivid picture of the lengths the Carthaginians might have gone to secure their city's prosperity and appease their gods. As we delve deeper into the history of Carthage, we'll uncover more about this fascinating civilization, its rise to power, its epic clashes with Rome, and its lasting impact on the world. Now that we've set the stage with this chilling introduction, let's journey back to the birth of Carthage. From its humble beginnings as a Phoenician settlement, Carthage rose to become a maritime superpower. This city-state, nestled on the northern coast of Africa, in what is now Tunisia, was founded by Phoenician colonists around the 9th century BC. The Phoenicians, a seafaring people hailing from the eastern Mediterranean, were known for their trading prowess and navigational skills, and they imbued Carthage with these same qualities. Carthage started as a modest port city, but with a strategic location, it soon grew into a bustling hub of trade. The Carthaginians traded with peoples across the Mediterranean, exchanging goods like precious metals, textiles and agricultural products. Their strategic position on the sea routes coupled with their Phoenician heritage allowed them to dominate the maritime trade. But it wasn't just their advantageous location and trading acumen that spurred Carthage's rise. The city-state also had a robust economic system. It was one of the earliest societies to use a standard coinage system, which facilitated trade and commerce. Carthage was also known for its agricultural innovations. They developed sophisticated irrigation systems and were among the first to cultivate crops like olives and grapes on a large scale. This agricultural abundance not only fed the growing population, but also became a valuable export, further boosting Carthage's economy. As Carthage's wealth and influence grew, so did its military might. The city-state built a formidable navy, unrivaled in the Mediterranean. This naval supremacy wasn't just for defense, it was also a tool for expansion. The Carthaginians established colonies and trading posts across the Mediterranean, from Sicily to Spain, extending their reach and influence. With its powerful navy and thriving economy, Carthage was poised for greatness. But conflict was on the horizon. The rise of another power in the Mediterranean Rome would soon challenge Carthage's supremacy, leading to a series of epic conflicts known as the Punic Wars. But that's a story for another scene. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the compelling saga of Carthage's rise and fall. Enter Rome, a budding empire with its sights set on Carthage. 
Now let's dive into the throes of the Punic Wars, the epic clashes that pitted the might of Carthage against the rising power of Rome. This was more than just a conflict over territory, it was a struggle for dominance in the Mediterranean world. The Punic Wars spanned over a century with three distinct bouts of bloodshed. The first Punic War saw Rome and Carthage locking horns over Sicily, a strategic island that acted as a gateway to the Mediterranean. The conflict was long and grueling, with naval battles becoming the order of the day. Rome, in the end, claimed victory, seizing control of the coveted Sicilian islands. Next, we enter the era of the Second Punic War, marked by the daring exploits of one of history's greatest military minds, Hannibal Barca. This Carthaginian general, known for his audacity and strategic brilliance, took the fight to Rome in a way that sent shockwaves through the Roman Empire. Hannibal's most notable campaign was his audacious crossing of the Alps to launch a surprise attack on Rome. This expedition, though fraught with peril, was a testament to Hannibal's resolve and tactical genius. Now, imagine this. Elephants, the colossal beasts of burden, trudging through the icy, treacherous terrain of the Alps. This was warfare on a scale that Rome had never seen before. Hannibal's onslaught brought Rome to its knees, winning several key battles like Trebia, Lake Trasimene and Cannae. However, the tide turned at the Battle of Zama, where Rome, under Scipio Africanus, dealt a crushing blow to Carthage. Despite Hannibal's valiant efforts, Rome emerged victorious. Yet this was not the end of Carthage. The city would rise again, its spirit unbroken, its legacy undiminished. As we'll see in the next scene, the Roman conquest was just another chapter in the mesmerizing saga of Carthage. So stay tuned as we continue to unravel the secrets of this invisible empire. In the aftermath of the Punic Wars, Carthage fell under Roman rule. The once powerful empire, a beacon of maritime supremacy and economic prosperity was now at the mercy of its old adversary. The Romans, triumphant and relentless, imposed their culture, religion and governance on the conquered Carthaginians. The Romans, however, were not mere oppressors. They were astute observers and adapters. They saw the wealth of knowledge and skill that Carthage had amassed and chose to absorb rather than obliterate. The Carthaginian system of governance their methods of trade and even their religious practices were modified and integrated into the Roman way of life. Carthage's maritime prowess did not go unnoticed either. The Romans, primarily a land-based power, recognized the strategic advantage of a strong naval presence. They adopted Carthaginian shipbuilding techniques, transforming their own navy into a formidable force. Rome's maritime supremacy in the Mediterranean can be traced back to the shipyards of Carthage, the Roman conquest also brought about significant changes in Carthage's social structure. The upper echelons of Carthaginian society were dissolved and a new Roman ruling class emerged. Yet, the common people, the heartbeat of Carthage, continued to thrive, their resilience a testament to the indomitable spirit of their forebears. Culturally, the Romans were greatly influenced by the Carthaginians. Carthaginian art and architecture with their unique blend of Phoenician, Greek and African elements, fascinated the Romans. They incorporated these aesthetics into their own, giving birth to a hybrid culture that would be later known as Romanesque. Religion too saw a fusion of beliefs. The Romans adopted and adapted several Carthaginian deities, integrating them into their own pantheon. The Carthaginian goddess Tanit, for instance, was syncretized with the Roman goddess Juno. These religious amalgamations demonstrate the profound impact of Carthaginian culture on Roman society. Carthage may have fallen, but its legacy lived on. The Roman conquest marked the end of Carthage as an independent entity, yet its influence permeated Roman society. Carthage was not obliterated, it was absorbed, its essence becoming an integral part of the empire that conquered it. Even in defeat, Carthage left an indelible mark on history. From its art and architecture to its influence on Western civilization, Carthage's legacy is far-reaching. This ancient empire, once a formidable force in the Mediterranean, shaped the course of history in ways that still resonate today. Carthage's architectural prowess was evident in its majestic buildings and innovative urban planning. The city's harbor, considered one of the wonders of the ancient world, was a testament to their engineering skills. Their architectural designs with their distinctive columns and arches continue to influence modern architecture. 
Carthaginian art too was a vibrant display of their cultural identity. Their intricate mosaics, detailed sculptures and ornate jewelry showcased their aesthetic sensibilities and craftsmanship which were unrivaled in the ancient world. But the impact of Carthage extends beyond its physical remnants. The Carthaginian diaspora, spurred by the fall of the empire, led to a significant cultural exchange. The Carthaginians, as they integrated into other societies, brought with them their knowledge, traditions, and skills, influencing cultures far and wide. Archaeological discoveries further underline Carthage's enduring impact. Excavations have unearthed artifacts and ruins that provide invaluable insight into this ancient civilization. These findings, from everyday objects to grand structures, tell a story of a society that was advanced for its time with a rich and complex culture. And yet, the greatest testament to Carthage's legacy might be its influence on Western civilization, from their maritime prowess that shaped trade routes to their governance system that inspired political structures the echoes of Carthage can be found in many facets of modern society. The story of Carthage is not just one of rise and fall. It's a story of resilience, of a civilization that left a lasting legacy despite its eventual demise. The impact of Carthage, encapsulated in its art, architecture and cultural influence, is a testament to this once great civilization's enduring significance. The rise and fall of Carthage is a captivating tale of power, conflict and legacy. It's a testament to a civilization that against all odds left an indelible mark on history. As we conclude this remarkable journey through the history of Carthage, we are reminded once more of the indomitable spirit of humanity. From its rise as a maritime powerhouse to its valiant last stand, Carthage's story is a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of the human spirit. It's a tale that resonates across the millennia, reminding us of our own potential to influence the course of history. The echoes of Carthage can still be found today, from the architectural designs that grace our cities to the cultural exchanges that enrich our societies. Its legacy lives on, a testament to a once great civilization that continues to inspire us with its enduring significance. Carthage's story is but one of many that shape our collective history, each one a fascinating chapter in our shared human journey. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Carthage's rich and complex past. We hope that you found this journey as enlightening as we have. If you want to delve deeper into the annals of history, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, History Hub. We bring you engaging and insightful content about the past, helping you understand the world we live in today. So, until our next historical journey, stay curious, keep exploring, and remember, history is not just about the past, it's about understanding our present and shaping our future. This is History Hub, signing off.